I have never come across anything like this. This time on Unexplained Mysteries, when ghosts attack. Sally, stop it. I had two scratches. Look at that. There's a little girl that's standing right there. Sally? Is that your name, Sally? MC. Yeah, we got a new scratch. Look, one's starting to bleed. Whoa. I'm not afraid of you. There were 11 separate instances of scratch marks on his body. She's right here with me right now. <laughs> I'm feeling something. Whatever is in the room wants me out. We'll show you what happens when a ghost lashes out against the living. Very capable of a very violent and a very abrupt attack. She scares the living daylights out of me. You'll see the shocking assault with your own eyes. I'm feeling something really cold shoot around my stomach. And hear the story of an innocent family terrorized by a poltergeist. She's right here, because it is freezing right here. I had four scratches that were bleeding as I looked at. So the family just happened to move in and bumped into Sally, literally. Things that go bump in the night, well, she bumped back. You'll hear from some real-life paranormal investigators. And this is like the most profound thing I've ever seen in all parapsychology. The psychic who experienced the wrath of the spirit himself. Sally's burning my face right now. Wow. Sally, you be nice. And the father who met the apparition one night. And as I turned around, there was a little girl standing not more than three foot away from me. Just as plain as you are to me now. With our exclusive data files, you'll hear from the audio experts. We cannot, in our own bodies, make that sound. We'll show you the photographic evidence. It's a, be a very difficult shot to recreate. The videotape of an attack in progress. One's starting to bleed. And later, the incredible revelation that shines a shocking new light on the attacks. She liked to blame things on other people and keep us guessing. I think we've got something very interesting and very exciting here, really potentially dangerous. And we'll give you the ultimate conclusion in our Unex report as we uncover the truth about ghosts on Unexplained Mysteries When Ghosts Attack. It happened in a small Midwestern town in a quiet neighborhood inside a typical house. One of the most chilling paranormal events in recent history. And it all started with a young couple's dream. A dream to get married, have children, and to buy their own home. We'll call them Pamela and Jeff. They asked us to keep their real identities a secret. This is their story, their dream, their house. But something is wrong here. A series of family snapshots, each containing an unexplained aura, and a child's crayon that appears to be floating. This was the room that there were a lot of um, photographs taken. Um, one was when I was sitting down here, and then two entities showed up, one about in this area here, and then one somewhere in this area here. This room spooks me, to be honest with you. This is where a lot of her activity happened. Leaving foreboding signs of what was to come. Doing an interview outside of something we've discovered in here, it just looks like it's burnt and the rest of the petal is moist still. It's still half alive. Um, but the outside, it's, I mean, it's, it's ashes. What happens when you are an unwelcome guest in your own home? The family turned to local psychic, Barbara Connor. Once inside the home, Connor was contacted by what she described as the lost soul of an eight-year-old girl named Sally. Did this explain the photographs? Was the ghost of Sally trying to make contact? And if so, why? A television crew arrives to find some answers. This only seemed to agitate Sally. We had gone over to my in-laws. We had come home. Um, shortly afterwards, we found all the stuffed animals. As the interview starts, 
Jeff begins to feel an unearthly presence. No mark here, but here it is. <laughs> Sally, stop it. Holy shit. What? How did that happen? You don't know. I, 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 Holy just shit. Just a second. Sally? Go on and walk in there. Walk in there. And, and get a towel and, and clean it off his arm. What's going on? Uh, I can't get my sense of it. She's right here, because it is freezing right here. It is freezing. I feel it. All you do is you feel this cold go through you. That's how I just Sally? look back. We're, we're interviewing. It's hot. We've turned the air conditioner off for sound purposes, but it is cold right here in this part of the room. And the air conditioner is off. Mm-hmm. I just felt Look at that. Cold Look at that. Like freeze me over here. This is the same thing that occurs when Holy he's scratched his face. Holy or he's had scratches across his forehead or down his arm. She does this when she's upset. <laughs> I know, my heart's pounding too. I think... I'm a little excited, I gotta tell you. Sally, we're gonna stop until Barbara comes here, okay? When Barbara comes, she'll, she'll right talk here. to you and let you know. Goodness. Hi, how are nice you? you? Nice to see you too. How are you doing? Already. Feeling good? <laughs> <laughs> What's this? That's what she just did. She just did this? Yeah. I feel her now. Yeah, she's here. Hi, Sally. What's going on? She's upset. She's a little upset. Yeah, well, honey, it's scary for us, too. Yeah, We've that's never what done I, anything like this. That's what I told her. I said, I said, no, it's everybody's uptight with this. Forehead. Jeff isn't sure Down he can go arm. on. I, she scares the living daylights out of me, to be honest with you. I, I'm going to add this right now. She's right here with me right now. <laughs> I'm feeling something. Really cold, shoot around my stomach. Then, one of the most shocking cases of paranormal activity began unfolding before our eyes. When this cold just shot through my arm, and it's done it before, I knew the feeling. It's just, I can't explain the cold. It's, it freezes your bones, everything. And as I looked towards my arm, I had four scratches that were bleeding as I looked at them. And it's really frightening. Yeah. With cameras rolling, Jeff is attacked again. She's just went right through my midsection. Oh my God, look, look. Long scratch marks appear up and down his stomach. I can't come up with an explanation why she does this. She tends to do this to me because I upset her sometimes. I, and she wants to be noticed, I think, today. <laughs> Who is Sally? Why does she harbor such hostility towards Jeff? And how far will she go? Who or what is responsible for these attacks? Next up, we'll explore all the possibilities. Most of the cases we come across are playful, mischievous, bizarre, weird, and a lot of them have just normal, natural explanations. And stay tuned for Unexplained Mysteries exclusive data files, analyzing the evidence. We cannot, in our own bodies, make that sound. Initially, I tried to recreate this simply with a, a few quick tricks, and unfortunately, they did not work for me. It's a, it'd be a very difficult shot to recreate. What happens when a world-renowned psychic attempts to contact the spirit? Whatever is in the room wants me out. Something is burning my face like right now. Sally, you be nice. Are the attacks real? We'll hear from the experts. And this is like the most profound thing I've ever seen in all parapsychology. That is bizarre. This cannot be duplicated. And we'll give you the ultimate update on these attacks with our Unex report. Stay tuned for more on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries When Ghosts Attack. What clues does the evidence gathered from the scene of the haunting prove? Paranormal investigator Al Rober is called. 
He sweeps the home with a magnetometer, taking readings at all the places Sally has shown herself. Suddenly, what seems to be the first sign of poltergeist activity, an electromagnetic field gathers around a crew member. Oh, man. That's weird. That's right. Yeah, right here. Ooh, and boy. the hair on your arms uh, is standing up. Right here. I can see it. See the hair yeah. over in this area here. Ooh, Just right, right here. Then in the next room, another attack on Jeff. First, bloody slits across his arm. Then, red welts on his forehead. This whole spirit thing scares me, and it just some of the things she's done, she's lit fires. After observing the brutal attack firsthand, Rober had this advice. One of the things I would, I would tell them would be to try to document some more of this. Uh, another thing that I would do, I would certainly recommend them to get rid of the toys in the corner and get rid of any encouragement that, that is now going on for this little girl ghost. Edson Williams, a trick photography specialist. He knows how to use a camera to fool the human eye. We gave him the photographs taken by Pam. The highlights that ran through the image, they're localized, they're not throughout the image, they're in very small regions, and they're running at different angles. I, initially, I tried to recreate this simply with a, a few quick tricks, and unfortunately, they did not work for me. It would be a very difficult shot to recreate. In another photo, blue streaks can be seen in the nursery where the entity first appeared. Williams tried to recreate the shot. Uh, initially, I thought it possibly could cut out a blue gel, which would be a, a blue plastic, clear plastic, and a wiggle that in front of the camera could recreate it. But the density differences were too varied. Several pictures that I was shown are very difficult to explain. To better understand what was happening, a supernatural researcher, Howard Heim, is called in. Immediately, a strange disruption of the video crew's equipment occurs. Next, a cold spot, just like the one Jeff experienced before his attack. You can feel it? Well, let's take a few minutes. So it's 77.7 .7 degrees Fahrenheit in here. Just drop the point. It did instantly drop the point from, from point 0.7 to point 0.6. Just dropped another point. It's dropping again, 0.4. Dropped again, it's 0.3 now. And I gradually and it dropped the point again, it's now 0.2. It keeps getting cooler in this room. It's like a narrow shaft of yeah. cool air. Mm -hmm. yes. And my hand is, I can feel it coming down, but his hand's on top of mine. And if you put yours underneath, you should be able to feel it as well, even yeah. though. Ooh, I actually feel, feel it slightly feel, cooler. Feel that? Yeah. Blowing around? Yeah. I actually feel like a small uh, circumference hand, about uh, four inches in diameter coming straight down. And our hands are blocking the airflow. Mm -hmm. hmm. That was interesting. It was almost like a narrow thing hitting the back of my hand. And in the kitchen, another sign of the entity's wrath. My husband found this kind of half fresh, half dead flower singed around the edges. That's incredible. The interior leaves are burnt around the edges with no damage to the overlapping leaves, as if they were individually burned and then assembled. That is bizarre. That you can't you can't duplicate this. This cannot be duplicated. Five minutes before the incident, the camera captures the rose intact. Howard Hine next moves to the nursery, the focus of the haunting. This is Sally's domain. It's like a gathering for her toys, things that she's allowed to play with and not get into trouble for. Oh, man. Yeah. Right here. See the oh, wow, we're in look, at look at that. Look at it. We're two and a half. Now we're at three. I can actually feel it it's between my fingers. It's very light, but it is noticeable. Although she had been felt by all who entered the house and left evidence of her presence, only Jeff had actually seen Sally. I walked over to the kitchen cabinet, 
opened the cabinet and got out a glass, poured my orange juice. Started to take a drink, and as I turned around, there was a little girl standing not more than three foot away from me, just as plain as you are to me now. Just standing there with this plain look on her face, just looking at me like she was curious about me too. And it, oh, I can't explain <laughs> the feeling I got. I dropped the glass, the glass shattered. And as I dropped the glass, she was gone just as quick as she was there. It was just gone. By now, everyone who had experienced the phenomenon felt that the focus of Sally's vengeance was Jeff. No one else had seen her. No one else had been attacked. Then, with a trained eyewitness looking on, Sally lashes out yet again at Jeff. Same J Look, one's starting to bleed. There's a whole new... Oh, look at that. Look oh at God. that. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. It actually... I knew just, she was around. <laughs> it's this nice dark one where it's bleeding. <laughs> For nine full minutes, the cameras rolled. Multiple scratches appear, ripping at his flesh, forming deep bleeding welts. The first documented case of a ghost attack. It just simply appeared. You lifted your shirt. The same scratches were there. You put this to your stomach, and all of a sudden, blood started to ooze out. I've seen scratches coming in, scratches that were done before, you know, I don't, you know, somebody who's in another room, you can scratch yourself, that type of thing, but that, not while he's standing here, not touching it, and it just oozed out all by itself and grew. You could see the line as if somebody was making a road. Even for seasoned paranormal investigator Howard Heim, this was a chilling encounter. And this is like the most profound thing I've ever seen in all parapsychology. I've seen and felt a few things myself, but it could be suggestion, but th this is not suggestion at all. This is fact, and you have it on tape. Coming up, a cemetery that may shed new light on this disturbing case. These entities do communicate with me. A paranormal investigator's startling discovery. I've been there, I've witnessed them happening while I was observing him. A mother trying to understand why. She just wanted to, to play and to be acknowledged and to be loved. A father in constant fear. I start thinking about being in that house and it, it, it can scare me again. And later, our exclusive case study, The Psychic Encounter. There's a little girl that's standing right there. I think we've got something very interesting and very exciting here and really potentially dangerous. And we'll unlock the final mystery of these ghostly attacks in our Unex Report. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries when ghosts attack. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence is a videotape that shows the skin on Jeff's stomach ripped open by an unseen force. Renowned paranormal investigator, Carrie Gaynor, studies the videotaped encounter. The exciting thing for me as a researcher is that the camera didn't pull away. It was there the whole time, and that severely reduces the, the possibility of any kind of hoax. Most of the cases we come across are playful, mischievous, bizarre, weird, and a lot of them have just normal natural explanations. This case, that involves scratch marks, this seems a little more frightening and something that we should be a little more cautious about in terms of, of studying the phenomenon. From the moment Pam and Jeff moved into their new home, strange events began to occur. Lights turned on and off, cold spots and electrical fields appeared out of nowhere. But most startling were the multiple attacks on Jeff. He was fearful of where the attacks would lead. She's lit fires tonight. You know, I think, well, if she wants to hurt me, why couldn't she just light me on fire? There's a real human angle here, and that is a man's being terrorized. Something is happening to him without his say, without his control, and he's got to be thinking to himself, well, if this could happen, what else could happen? Although Sally's anger had targeted Jeff, it has yet to escalate to anything life-threatening which explains why the family has remained in the house when so many others would have fled. There needs to be more data 
so that we can know what exactly this is, what causes it. Why, does, why do these things happen to certain people, certain places, certain times? This is the beginning of the research and a lot more needs to be done in order for me to really feel comfortable that this is uh, a legitimate case. Eager to conduct his own study, Kerry Gaynor arrives at the site searching for answers. Tell me about your fear level in the beginning and, and how you feel now. Gaynor speaks with Pam about the previous encounters. He brings with him the most sophisticated monitoring equipment available. His crew sets up the electronics in the spots where the poltergeist activity has been reported. There are oscilloscopes, frequency counters, and surveillance cameras, and a thermal camera that can visibly detect even the most minute of temperature changes. Immediately, it picks up a cold spot emanating near a crew member. It went right again, right over here. But I get this, I get like a cool right here, right here. <laughs> it's really weird. As night falls, everyone waits for Sally to appear. Jeff calls out to her. Sally, can you do this for me, please? I'd like to, for you to show them that you're really here. Disruptions in the video signal and the frequency counter announce the arrival of an unearthly presence. Then, with Kerry Gaynor's trained eye observing, Jeff is attacked again. Yeah, we got fresh blood here. This wasn't here two minutes ago. This tense investigation continued through the night. The results were shocking. Jeff was attacked 11 separate times. There were 11 separate instances of scratch marks on his body. Some of the scratches were very thin, and some were very thick, welt-like scratches that were really quite frightening. The next morning, Gaynor was left with a wealth of data to study. One of the first things to surface when analyzing the videotapes of the investigation is an unnatural noise, detectable only when the audio level was amplified. Is this the voice of a ghost? Rick Wilson of Digisonics is a forensic audio specialist. He examines audio tapes for the CIA, the FBI, and the Justice Department. See, one thing that makes this sound interesting and eliminates a lot of possibilities right off the bat is that above about 500 hertz, there's nothing there. Wilson eliminates any sort of magnetic or electrical interference in the tape. But could the sound have come from someone else in the house? There's nothing in this sound. There's a lot of background noise, but that's constant before and after the sound. But when this sound comes in, it's all low frequency and that's it. And we cannot, in our own bodies, make that sound. Could the entity have been trying to make contact with the family? It's interesting that it came right after Jeff asked them to asked Sally to please let, let them know that she was here. And then this low rumbling sound started and built up in volume, an energy sound that perhaps they produced at his request. Very, very interesting. Is it a ghost? Um, I really have absolutely no way of knowing. I really don't. Um, my best bet is that it's something magnetic. And how that magnetism was introduced is anybody's guess. During the last 20 years, I've investigated about 850 cases, and during that time, I have never come across anything like this. I think we've got something very interesting and very exciting here, and really potentially dangerous. Next, what is really going on in this home? Is it haunted by the spirit of an eight-year-old girl, or is it something else? We'll bring you the incredible case study of the psychic who dared enter Sally's domain. You hear that? Get right in my hand. It hit me right there. Hello? I'm not afraid of you. And provide clues that explain the motivation of the attacks. She just wanted to be noticed and she wanted to play. I think Sally felt a little uh, lonely there. 
we'll detail the most vicious and violent attack to date. Later, a bizarre twist in the shocking story. I knew this woman in a past life or a previous life. And, and you'll get the climactic revelation about Sally with our Onyx report. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries When Ghosts Attack. Somewhere in the Midwest, a violent ghost is terrorizing a young husband and his family. In desperation, they contact psychic Peter James, a man who claims he can talk to the dead. He was told nothing about the attacks, the scratch marks, or the spirit known as Sally. I got just a glimpse of that upper window of the face of a little girl, and I don't know who lives here. It's a boy, right? But I saw the face of a little girl in that window just now. Once inside the home, he confirms what others have felt. There's a little girl that's standing right there, right at the top of the stairs. Hello? 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 Can you speak to me? Sally? Is that your name, Sally? Sally? I'm getting a lot of resistance right here at the door, meaning whatever is in the room wants me out. Speak to me. Show yourself. As Peter James attempts to make contact, the entity makes its presence known. It is the most aggressive attack yet. He felt the cold yeah. fly past him. And yeah, she scratched you? There. I'm, my back's been stinging. <laughs> are, you, are you OK? Yeah, just. Don't, don't be frightened. There's nothing to be afraid of. Remember. <clears throat> Remember, you're 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 in control here, so don't don't. MC. Ooh. I heard that electrical shock. Yeah, so let me just right here, right here, right in my hand. Did you hear that? Get right in my hand. It hit me right there. Hello. Easy. I'm not afraid of you. Peter James's encounter leaves him with more questions. Hoping to find a clue, he visits the local cemetery and is drawn to a small grave. The grave of a child. I do feel, as we speak, that over the years that at least three people died in this house. She, she tells me that there was something with her, with her lungs, with her breathing, and also that she hurt her foot or her, or her ankle. A trip to the Hall of Records confirms that a little girl named Sally had lived in the house. She died in 1905. This was Sally's grave. But what about the cryptic initials carved into Jeff's back? Was there another entity here? Could this second spirit be responsible for the attacks? The cold spots, the fires, the attacks, it was all too much. Pam and Jeff packed their belongings and moved out of their dream house. Something had chased them out but Pam still needed closure. Peter James returns to the house. A video crew documents the encounter. I'm back. I want to go in this room first. Our nighttime is their daytime. There's someone, there's someone 
there is an entity in this room right now, no doubt in my mind. Give us a better verification that you're here. Whoever you are, identify yourself. You hear that? Tell me what you hear. It, it sounds almost like a moan. Yeah, it's a moaning. You hear it? Is this where you are, Sally? Right here? Yes. Whoa, yes. Feel this. Feel this right here. Or is that is that is that from the is that from the heater? No. No, it's right here. It's right here. Right here. Feel it. Feel it? Yes. Yeah, right here. Look. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Hello? Yeah. Oh yeah. Right She's right there. There we go. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, that's it. She's here. Uh, hi, Sally. There she is. Hi, Sal. Whoa, feel that. Whoa. Woo. Come and hold my hand, Sally. Sally? James ventures into the former nursery, the epicenter of Sally's activity. Sally? Would you like to play with me and the teddy bear, Sally? No one expected what was to happen next. Right? Yeah, I'm fine. Just burn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's oh, man, didn't burn. The entity lashes out at Peter. Something is burning my face, like right now. It... Wow, Sally, you be nice. After the burning incident, James now understands why Jeff was targeted. I believe that Sally, or the perpetrator, if you will, that did all the scratching, uh, had a thing for him that, that, that disliked him immensely. But the activity remains the same. Sally is still here and active. When you enter the domain, if you will, of a ghost, they let you know that you're invading their space. So the family just happened to move in and bump into Sally, literally. Things that go bump in the night, will she bump back? Next on Unexplained Mysteries, Jeff and Pam are finally ready to reveal their true identities. We get our taunts every once in a while. I know what's happening. My wife knows what's happening. That's what's important to me. Then, a shocking revelation about Sally and the ghostly attacks. When actual things started to be lit on fire, I don't think that was a little girl. We had been told by different psychics that there was a, another entity there. She liked to blame things on other people and, and keep us kind of guessing. This clearly says you better reconsider your, your thinking patterns about ghostly activity. And finally, we'll bring you the ultimate conclusion in our Onyx report on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained mysteries when ghosts attack. Mysterious attacks from an unseen force. A family driven from their home. Pam and Jeff have escaped the horror, and now they are ready to tell you the rest of the story and reveal their true identities. They are Deborah and Tony Pickman. They live in Atchison, Kansas, a small town north of Kansas City. Things culminated to such a point where it was getting really dangerous for Tony. The, the scratches seemed to be getting more severe and more frequent. Just the whole mood in the house changed. One day walking out of the master bedroom, he was shoved from behind pretty, pretty forcefully and he all but stopped himself from going over the railing and down the stairs. I flew a good 10, 12 inches in the air and hit the railing of the stairs, knocked out two rungs of the railing. And it just felt like something, somebody was gonna get hurt if we stayed any longer. And it just felt we have to get out of here before it's too late. While the Pickmans have moved on, they are afraid that Sally may have followed them. They ask Peter James to come to the new house. We had Peter James come in because my husband had had an ordeal, and I don't blame him. He didn't want to go through that again. Had the spirit of Sally followed the family to their new home? I got an immediate sense that it would be very unlikely that they would have any kind of a haunting activity in, in, in the new house. The new house is clean. 
because I believe that houses are haunted and not people. He said that he was unimpressed, which meant that there was nothing here. <laughs> My husband was very pleased with that. Although Peter thinks that the new house is clean, Tony is still scared. Scared because he knows something. Sally was not responsible for the attacks at the old house. We had been told by different psychics that there was a, another entity there. We first had an idea that there were other entities when the malicious scratches and the, the fires had started in the house, which didn't seem like the pranky little sweet little girl that we had in mind being Sally. This entity had apparently entered the Pickman's old house after they had come in contact with Sally. Each time things would happen and they would escalate and they would say, oh, well, you know, Sally's doing it again. The story had gotten out that, you know, we were having trouble in the house and Sally was the first name mentioned and it just seemed like whenever something did happen, it was fingers were all pointed at Sally. Maybe that was why she was doing it because she wanted the attention and, and not Sally. Who was this new entity and what was her connection to Tony? One psychic suggested that maybe it was a, I knew this woman in a past life or a previous life. Deborah has a different theory why this woman was attacking her husband. Almost as a possessive or a jealous kind of a, he's mine, if I can't have him, nobody can. Or has a bone to pick with somebody and unfortunately it seemed like me. <laughs> This new information has forced the Pickmans to reevaluate why Sally was in the house. I think Sally felt a little uh, lonely there. I mean, uh, just a little girl like that being there. And I think she was almost happy that there was a family there. There was, you know, a, a, another child she could relate to. She just wanted to be noticed and she wanted to play. There were a lot of play things in the house. In the end, Deborah developed a special bond with a little girl's ghost. I have a friend in New York that has a haunted house, and I always wanted a ghost of my own. And Sally just seemed to be such a young, quiet, you know, innocent little spirit. She thought at first, you know, before things started getting out of hand, that it was kind of interesting or neat to have a, a, a spirit in the house, but. Uh, no, I never, it, it scares the hell out of me. Even after surviving this ordeal and finally learning the truth, Tony still lives in constant fear. I know to this day I still a lot of times have to sleep with the TV on or something because I just, to be in a quiet room anymore, just I start thinking about being in that house and it, it, it can scare me again. Next, the Unex Report. We'll examine the evidence and answer the questions. Who or what has been tormenting this innocent family? The lonely spirit of a young girl or a spiteful entity trying to destroy a marriage? We'll bring it all together next with our Unex Report when Unexplained Mysteries returns. Unexplained Mysteries when ghosts attack and now, for the Unex Report. It defied any rational explanation. One family terrorized in their own home by an unseen force that struck without warning, attacking a father and husband, leaving bloody marks across his body. It is a case that both excites and frightens everyone who has come in contact with the mischievous spirit. And this is like the most profound thing I've ever seen in all parapsychology. I think we've got something very interesting and very exciting here and really potentially dangerous. The husband, who was the target of the attacks. She's right here with me right now. <laughs> I'm feeling something. There were 11 separate instances of scratch marks on his body. Our pictures on the wall are turned upside down. The psychic who claims to feel her ghostly touch. There is an entity in this room right now no doubt in my mind. Sally, you be nice. The evidence that defies any rational explanation. We cannot, in our own bodies, make that sound. I've never heard anything quite like it. It's a, it'd be a very difficult shot to recreate. Whether you believe it was the playful spirit of an eight-year-old girl named Sally, 
or the vengeful spirit of a jealous woman, something did happen in this house. How can we deny the fact that she's here? And this clearly says you better reconsider your, your thinking patterns about ghostly activity because there are two entities here and will remain here. With further investigation, we have a good opportunity to solve this mystery. Yes. I really, I think we have a pretty good chance. Deborah and Tony each have different thoughts about their ghostly encounter. I go by there when I get the chance, when I'm, yeah, and I look at it, I look at it and I, I wonder what's going on there as far as the other realm, um, how Sally's doing. After being in there, I know that from what I've gone through, that I'm a little more religious than I used to be. <laughs> the house is empty now waiting for its new tenants. Will Sally be waiting too? In Sally's eyes, this is her home. We've heard from the witnesses, listened to experts, and examined the evidence, but nothing can fully explain what occurred in this house. That is why, for now, these ghostly attacks must remain an unexplained mystery. I hope that no one else has to go through what I did in that house. Ruthless obsessions. He had filleted his heart and kept it in the freezer. Extreme beliefs. I was chanting Lucifer over and over. Cold-blooded killers or victims so desperate they were driven to madness and murder. Notorious. Weeknights at 8, only on Bio. True Story.